All right, welcome to the last video part for R.1. Objective 7, simplify algebraic expressions. All right, this is with properties of real numbers. So there are a bunch of properties. You don't really need to memorize the, um, that was not supposed to wiggle. You don't really need to memorize the names of the properties so much as the actual use of the properties at this point. Okay, so commutative property of addition. So this is saying, if you have two numbers being added together, it's the exact same thing as the opposite order. So if you have a plus b, that's exactly equal to b plus a. It doesn't matter which order they're in. For example, 4 plus 6 is the same thing as 6 plus 7. Let's check that. 4 plus 6 is going to be 10, which is the same thing as 6 plus 4. Another way to look at it is if you were using a variable, if you had 6 plus w, that is the exact same thing as w plus 6. Okay, commutative. Now, next we look at the commutative property of multiplication. So this is saying if you have a times b, this is the exact same thing if you had b times a. The order does not matter when you're using multiplication or addition. For example, 3 times 5 is 15. That's the same thing as 5 times 3. So if you see variables like x times 12, that's the same thing as 12 times x. Let's look at the next property, associative property. The associative property, this is when we bring in parentheses. So if you had three different numbers. And let's say you first decided to add the first two. Your result is not different if instead you had decided to add together the last two. Your result is not going to be different. You'll get the same answer. For example, 1 plus 2 plus 3. If you add those together, you're going to get 3 plus 3, which is 6. Same thing if you had first started and added the 2 plus 3 first. That would be 1 plus, this is 5, 6. So it works either way. And you can do the same thing with variables. I don't have space here, so I won't write down the variable example. Next, let's, let's look on to, ooh, tongue twister. Let's look on to the associative property of multiplication. So this time, Instead of addition, let's look at multiplication. So if you had a times b times c, if you decided to first multiply the same these first two, it's not different than if you decided instead to multiply the last two together. Let's take another look at example for this one. If you had 3 times 4 times 2, versus grouping it the other way, so grouping one way, grouping the other way. First way, 4 times 3 is 12, times 2, that's 24. The next version, we had 4 times 2, which is 8, and then 3 times 8 is 24. So it doesn't matter which ones you multiplied first, you'll still end up with 24. All right, the next one. So the identity, identity, property of addition. What does that mean? Well, the identity property of addition is just saying, is there a number out there that when you add any number to that number, you get itself? Sounds kind of confusing, but if you add 0 to a, what do you get? I don't know what a is, but I do know if you add 0 to anything, you're just going to end up with the same answer, because 0 is nothing. So a plus 0 is a, and the same thing is 0 plus a is also a. Actually, let me color code that. All right. And an example on that, let's just go ahead and do negative 5 plus 0 is still negative 5. And... 0 
plus negative 5 is also negative 5. Doesn't matter which one you add first. Now let's look at the identity of multiplication. So for addition, the identity number is 0. For multiplication, the identity number is 1. So some value times 1 is just going to give that value right back. Anything, anything times 1 is just itself. And then, oops, 1 times anything is also just itself. For example, 10 times 1 is 10, and 1 times 10 is 10. Three more properties. Here we go. The inverse property of addition. What is this? This is just saying, if you have a number, you can add a number to it to get 0. Well, what could I add to a to get 0? Well, the inverse, or the opposite number, right? Negative a. And as usual, you could do the opposite. Have that negative number first, and then your a. For example, 5 plus what would give me 0? Well, how would I get 0? What do I add to 5 to get 0? Well, I add the opposite of it, negative 5. Or I could go the opposite direction, it will still work. Negative 5 plus 5 will equal 0. The next one we have, and this other one is pretty important, this will be important for solving equations, the inverse property of multiplication. So, if you have a number, what can you multiply it to to get 1. Hmm, good question. You multiply it by the inverse of that number. So just the reciprocal. You flip it. When that happens, those values cancel and you're just left with 1. Same thing happens for if you just did 1 over a times a, you'll get 1. An example of this. What could you times to 7 to get 1. Well, I multiply 7 by 1 seventh. The 7s will cancel, and I'm left with 1. Last property. This is the distributive property. So I kind of went over this one a little bit earlier. But the distributive property is basically saying, if you have some value, well, let me change the color, if you have some value being timesed to items inside a parenthesis, what you can do is distribute that item, but you must distribute to each term inside the parentheses. And there can be more than just two inside the parentheses. And that will give you a times b plus a times c. Here's an example. If I had 2 times w plus 5, I can distribute the 2 in, multiply it to the w, then multiply it to the 5. So that will be 2 times w plus 2 times 5, which I can simplify to 2w plus 10. Okay, so this is also a very useful property you'll be using a ton in this class. Okay, so keep note of that one. All right, example 8, apply the distributive property. All right, well, I see the parentheses. And then I see this little guy hanging out on the side, so I know. Let's go ahead and use the distributive property. Let's multiply the 2 to the 3. So that'll give me 2x times 3. Plus, and then let's multiply the 2x to the 4x. And then plus. Notice I'm just copying down the sign from the middle. If it was a negative, I would have copied down a negative. And the last term. 2x times 5y. All right, let's go ahead and multiply these out. So 2x times 3, that's going to be 6x plus. OK, this one gets a little more tricky. We have the 2 and the 4, so that'll give us 8. But then we have the x times x. So remember, when we saw something like 2 times 2, that was 2 squared, right? So if we see x times x, that's just going to be x squared. So 8x squared. And then plus, 
We'll multiply the numbers, so that'll be 2 times 5, which is 10. And then the x and the y. We cannot combine x and y because they're not the same. All right, there we go. That is it for that, for the distributive property. Now let's move on to example 9. Simplify by using the distributive property and combining like terms. All right, got a big problem going on here. So the main thing I want to do is focus on the parentheses. Where are they? I got these parentheses, these parentheses, and these parentheses. Okay, so a lot of distributive properties going to be going on. Feel free to pause the video, try this by yourself, and check back in with me in a sec. All right, so let's go ahead and work on the distributive property. So we have 5d minus. Now let's see. Okay, you got to be careful with this minus sign here. There are a few ways to treat this minus sign. I'm going to go ahead and keep it by itself and just distribute over the positive 2c to these guys right here. So that's going to be 4c times 2c plus 2c times 8d. Now it doesn't matter, remember, you can put 2c in front or in the back. Then bring down this plus. And then let's go ahead and distribute the 3c. So we get 3c times 1. Oh, careful, there's that minus. Minus 3c times d. And the last one, bring down the sign. Let's go ahead and distribute the c in. That'll be c times c. Bring down the plus, and then c times 1. Some of you might be able to do all of this in your head, and that's pretty okay at this point. I would just caution you against doing everything in your head, because when the exam time comes, your final answer is actually only worth a few points. Points are given based on work shown. So, if you skip some steps and your answer is wrong, I cannot give you full partial, or I cannot give you partial credit for work that's not shown. So always, I would say, show work and show it neatly that way you can support your answer and if maybe you missed a minus somewhere you'll still get a lot of the points back because you showed a lot of work which showed what you were doing and that you knew what you were doing so as always i like showing work is a i think a good idea okay let's go ahead and multiply this out 4c times 2c is 8c squared plus 2 in the 8 so 16 cd Bring down the plus. 3c times 1 is just 3c. Minus 3cd. Plus, so c times c is going to be c squared. Plus c. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and see if I have any negatives to distribute into parentheses. And I do right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that first. So some of you might have done this in the earlier step up here. If you did, awesome. If not, we're going to go ahead and take care of it now. So that's 5d minus 8c squared minus 16cd. Then plus, we'll go ahead and drop these parentheses because we don't have a negative sign. 3c minus 3cd plus c squared plus c. Woo! All right, we've, got rid of, we've gotten rid of all the parentheses. Awesome. So we don't need to do any more distributive property. Now we just need to combine any like terms. All right, so let's see, like terms. Um, I'm going to kind of ignore the numbers at the moment and just focus on the variables. I have a D here, but none of the other terms have just one D. So that guy's by itself. He has no other like terms. I have a C squared here. Do I see any other C squares? Aha, right there. Okay, we have two like terms. Let's keep looking. I have a CD. Do I see any other CDs? Ah, oh, right there, another CD. And let's check it out. Lastly, we have C. Do I see any other Cs? Ah, right there. Okay, so we've gone through everyone and we found some like terms. Let's go ahead and combine them. So the 5D didn't have a like term, so I'll just go ahead and copy him down. Next, we have negative 8C plus 1C. So negative 8 plus 1 is going to be negative 7. 
So we have negative 7c squares. Now let's take a look at the CDs. We have negative 16 minus 3. That's going to be negative 19. So we have negative 19 CD. Lastly, we have the C and the other C. So we have 3 plus 3, which, ooh, 3 plus 1, which is going to be 4. Plus 4C. Four and that's it. We have no more like terms. We have no more parentheses. We are done. Hard work, but we have finished. All right, let's take a look at the last objective, which is writing algebraic models. Okay, so models is kind of another word of word problems, so it's what you're doing in life. It's how we model the real world with math. So example nine, rewrite the following statements as algebraic models. So the first one, example A, 12 less than twice a number. And we're told to let n be the number. Okay, so as usual, remember math is just another language. So you can translate between languages, and that's our goal here. We already see one number, so that's great. And then we're told 12 less than twice a number. Well, twice a number, hmm, would that be 2n or n squared? Twice a number is going to be 2 times your number. Okay, so we know twice a number is 2n, and then we want 12 less than that. Okay, so this is where I see a lot of students get mixed up. Is it this or is it this? Okay, so I have a problem for you. Let's say I have 24 shoes and my sister has 12 less than me. To figure out how many I have, would I do my amount and take away the 12 or would I do 12 minus the amount? So remember, I'm saying my sister has 12 less shoes than I do. Well, I would find, I would use this as my answer, right? Because my sister has 12 less than I do. So, what you do is you take the amount you're looking at and you subtract the 12 from it. So, 12 less than twice a number would actually be your number minus 12. Because you have 12 less than 2n. Okay, so a teeny bit tricky, but maybe that shoe example hopefully helped. Alright, last part. After eating at a restaurant, Jim leaves a tip T for his server, which is 15% of the cost of his meal C. Write a model to represent the amount of tip dip, based on the cost. Okay, so what we want to find is what the tip is going to be based on how much he spent. Well, what we know is that his tip is... fifteen percent of the cost. Alright, so this is where we're going to go ahead and use our translation skills for mathematics. One of the main things to know is is the English word for the equal sign. Good thing to know here. And then, let's see, fifteen percent well, in math that's pretty much the correct thing, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a decimal. We can't have a percent in an, an equation. All right, next thing, we have his tip and the cost. What is the tip? Well, the tip, we were told that is the variable t. I'll go ahead and plop that into my equation. One thing to note, once you find the word is, anything that's on the left will stay on the left, and anything that's on the right will stay on the right. All right, so we've translated this one, this one, this one. The only things left we have to translate are of, and the cost. Well, the cost, we're told, is the variable c. And lastly, we need to translate of. So of, in math, is the word for multiplication. All right, and there we have it. Let me go ahead and clean up our equation. Our equation is t, the tip, is 0.15 times the cost. So the tip is 15% of the cost. And there we go. We have our equation or our modeling for that problem. 
Once again, please email me if you have any questions. Make sure to turn your lecture notes into PDF files, upload them to your Dropbox for week one, because this is week one. For week two, you'll go ahead and create another folder labeled week two, and then input all those lecture notes in the week two folder. But once again, all the lecture notes from week one should go in the week one lecture note folder that you will create in Dropbox. If you're not certain how to do that, please send me an email.